today I have one of these air heater remote control thermostat carbon monoxide alarm controllers. Uh, Sunster was kind enough to provide this one. I had seen them before, people have told me about them, but this is the first time I have had the chance to have one and I thought I would show you it working. So for reference, it's uh, just down as an air heater remote control and the model number is A2422. And we're going to try and pair it with the heater and show it in operation. Uh, as a note, it requires three AAA batteries. I've just put the old Eneloop rechargeables in for just now. But it's, I suppose it would have been nice if it had been a, you know, rechargeable batteries and USB-C perhaps, so you could have it uh, rechargeable or plugged in. But hey, here we are. This is what we've got. Right, according to the instructions for pairing, we long press that button till the Bluetooth thing lights up and then there's buttons on the heater to press that aren't in the instructions, which is kind of important. Wait, we could do this in one shot. I'm going to move that over there. You have to press and hold this. This is the, they're not, there's only problem, they're recessed, you can't really see them. So that's a negative, that's like a settings, that's a power button and that's a plus. So we're going to, Press and hold the plus until the Bluetooth icon starts to flash. Let's see, so Bluetooth icon is flashing. And then we press and hold the the right button and the off button. And it goes into add and hopefully. Hopefully the two communicate. Do, 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 do. Oh, there it goes. It just needed to, okay. Either I did it in the wrong order there or, but anyway, you're pressing holding that button and then you're putting it into that mode where it goes add and then it's successful. It says suck for successful. And then there's a countdown timer where it's just going to go back to being restarted, but as you can see there, the heater now knows it's off. It's in, well, temperature set for zero degrees. Uh, all right, let's see if we can go through the workings of this. So that should be the settings button that goes through. Do you have to, oh, we're gonna have to read more instructions here. So the beauty of this device is means you don't need to bring this controller into your tent. Let's say you're on this outside. You don't need to bring this inside with the long ex the cable it comes with. You can just bring this inside because it's got a thermostat inside it. So you can do the temperature control or you can set it with the levels and do it remotely. And also the carbon monoxide alarm, which is kind of the most important bit. But we will come back to the carbon monoxide bit once this heater's decided to run up and actually start. Because you can you can set the trigger points for the alarm and the cutoff. So I think from factory it's set at 50 parts per million, it starts to beep. And at 100 parts per million, it turns the heat off. I think they could do with being a lot lower than that. So in the settings, carbon monoxide, well you can also do carbon monoxide calibration, which is good because they tend to wander a little bit, but if you can calibrate it so if you're out in the wild open air, then they'll be zero basically, or as good as zero as you need to worry about. Okay, actually, that's a bit of a good test while it's running just now. Hold on. Good job with it a bit. It is running. Carbon monoxide is currently like off a scale. So let's put this over here in the gas stream of exhaust. Can you see? You know, my hand's way outside of shot here. Right. I'm up here in the hot exhaust stream. Hopefully it's warm up here. Hot! Okay. That's 148 parts per million. Let's see. Over 100. The little alarm light's flashing on it. It's A66, it's 61, and there you go, the heater's turned off. The heater is, you see it flashing there, off. 
it has turned off. So the carbon monoxide alarm, but it works. It is absolutely killed here. Nice. So that bit works, yeah. So it detected over 100 parts per million and turned the heat off. And it's still detecting it just now. <sighs> Great. Shh. Right, so we're in fan. So now we can go into the settings and fiddle about. Do I need to be more zoomed, zoomed in down here? Would it help? Yeah. Right. So according to the thing, adjusting value 4, Aye, value four first, so we press and hold the settings. Right, F0 is the current time. F1 is the temperature compensation. A2 is the temperature unit. 3 is the alarm level of carbon monoxide. So let's set that something lower. We press and hold the... All right, you just press it and then it flashes. So let's set the alarm to something sensible like 20. And we'll set that. And then we should be able to go to F04, which is the carbon monoxide level that it turns off at. Let's make that less. Let's make that 50. All right, and let's set that to 50. Because basically, you don't want any carbon monoxide inside. And then F5, F305 is, oh no, that's the one we just set. F6, which one's F6? The temperature value setting interface, I don't know what that one is. And F7's the backlight, and, oh, I see what we're doing here, F3, F4, F5, F7. Carbon monoxide, oh, that's the calibration for carbon monoxide. And F7 just tells you the firmware version. Right, so that's us back to the start. I don't want to change the time, no. Press null to set. Right, just go back to the start. Please. Oh no, you press the power button to go back. Ah, God damn it. Come back! I didn't mean to turn you off. Now, there is a way to display the carbon monoxide level that it's reading. So it's reading 32 just now, and I've set the lamp to 30. So this one's still showing 18. Over reading is good. I would rather it over read than under read. It probably could do with a calibration. Obviously, there's no point in calibrating it in here where there's carbon monoxide, but I would take it outside to calibrate it. In fact, I might just go and do that. But at least it's it's reading the carbon monoxide in the room just now. That bit's working. Right. Let me read the bit for calibration. Okay, I have calibrated outside and we have zero, so I'm not gonna bring it inside and set it next to it. Now, bear in mind the other one's still showing 13, so I'm hoping this actually shows or it takes a reading in a moment. So to check the current carbon monoxide level when you're in, you know, fan mode, heating mode or anything, if you want to check it, press and hold the negative button. And it switches to the carbon monoxide reading. If you press it again, it toggles between temperature and time. And then you just leave it alone for 10 seconds and it goes back to, uh, you know, the normal mode of showing you what the heater is doing. Like that, so it switches back to fan mode. And obviously if fan, you can turn the fan up and down. And after a brief delay, it turns the fan up and down. It's blowing things away in the workshop. So that works. I know it heats up because it's already been running. It does the levels is a thermostat, obviously you set the temperature you want it to be in and it turns the heater up and down. Is there a is there an on off thermostat? I can't tell if that's the, the automatic mode. I presume that's what the automatic like, uh, where is it? 
No. Ah, so you've got level mode. Level mode? Where's my fingers? Jesus. Aye, right, so level control, temp control, constant, automatic mode. I know what super plus is. Super is the strong heat mode. Okay, not all heaters can do this, smashing. And then fan is the ventilation mode. Right, let's put it, let's try temperature then. Let's. So we set it to temperature. Okay, so it's currently set to 25 degrees. So we'll let it fire up and then we'll put the thermostat in the exhaust, no, in the heater stream. If we put it in the exhaust stream, we'll turn the heater off. Hopefully with the door open now, we've got zero parts per million on that meter. We won't get uh, any readings. Right, so we've got the heater set to 25 degrees on there. 25 degrees, and it's currently reading 15. Now the heater's only running at half power. And this is in temperature control mode, this isn't level mode. I thought it would have ramped up to full power. Like, what happens if we turn the temperature up then? Right, 36 degrees is as hot as it can go. What's it going to do now? Okay, now it's got a max power. Right, the heater's ramping up now. So if we take the thermostat and put it in the heat. Hot, oh, it's hot. So let's just point straight down. Keep it in the heat. I want to see what turns down. Oh, the carbon monoxide alarm next to the heater is getting a reading. Do we have a reading of carbon monoxide over here? Nope, not over here. Good. Ah oh, man, this here's going to hop. I want to see if this getting hotter triggers what it triggers the heater to do in this mode. My fingers are starting to burn. I'll point that side. That's, 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 let's, let's, let's have flow through the through the vents of the thing. There we go. We're starting here now. Now the heater starts to throttle back. Right. Hopefully. It is throttling back. Slowly. Ha! I want to have to feel the pull time, isn't it? Seems about five seconds. Ten seconds? Right, the heater's now going to minimum power. As you can see on the display, the heater's are way down to minimum, minimum power. So that bit's doing that, it's ramping up and down depending on set temperature. So the next one is automatic mode. But that's also temperature control, so we should set that to something like... something sensible. Right, so we'll set that to 25. It already thinks it's 40 degrees near, so we'll give that a few minutes to come to. <gasps> so I don't fully understand the difference between temperature control and automatic control. Ah! Automatic control is the one that turns the heater on and off. Full thermostat mode. Okay, that makes sense. Obviously we set it to 25, that 
unit still sitting at 38 degrees, so it's turned the heater off. Okay, so that's a full thermostat that's turning the heater on and off. Well, that's answered that question. Now, my next question is, I'm not putting in super mode, or, let's put it back to level mode. Right, gear mode, and set it to, I know it's minimum, level minimum. I have to wait for the fire back up. Okay, here's a test I want to run. Here's running, it's just running levels mode just now. What happens if this loses power during the night? Try and fish a battery out here. Give it its polling interval to see if it works out the remote control's gone. Knows the you see the carbon monoxide symbol went off. Right, that wasn't the result I was hoping for. So that means that during the night, if the batteries in this go flat, you're no longer protected. What I was hoping to see was that if it lost communication with the carbon monoxide alarm, it would turn the heater off. Because I would much rather you woke up cold at night with no heater running than waking up dead uh, with a, halt, a fault developing during the night and the carbon monoxide somehow making its way into your you know, tent, caravan, whatever what you're staying in and, uh, and something and you're dying I'd, yeah. so I'd much rather logic had been that if it lost communication with that it just turned the heater off that would have been a much, much better thing yeah, okay, alright Perhaps that could be implemented in a firmware update or something like that. That was the Sunster carbon monoxide alarm slash controller slash remote thermostat and it did the thing. It controls the heater thermostatically uh, and you know levels and, and most importantly it turns off when the set level of carbon monoxide is detected. And alarms, not the loudest alarm in the world to be fair but it's most, more important that it turns it off when it reaches the defined value. Saying that, if when you get one, buy one, the first thing I would do is make the carbon monoxide settings a lot lower, like be a lot more uh, strict. Uh, alarm at 20 or 30 and then turn off at 50, or even more so, more like you basically don't want any carbon monoxide in your camping space, living space. If you can entirely avoid it, please, please do so. Uh, that said, uh, the only thing I don't like is it doesn't turn off if it loses power to the... Like if the batteries go flat during the night, you just, it stops you having any protection whatsoever from the carbon monoxide. But it's, it's a start though, I mean it's, we're getting the right direction, we're heading more towards safety, which is good, it's always a good thing. So if you have any questions, comments, anything like that, just leave them down below and I will try my very best to answer them. And as always, thanks for watching!